report finds thousands of Xinjiang mosques, mosques destroyed and damaged in Xinjiang, China, or East Turkestan, or the Uyghur Autonomous Region. Um, thousands of mosques in Xinjiang, China, have been damaged or destroyed in just three years, leaving fewer in the region than at any time since the Cultural Revolution according to a report on Chinese oppression of Muslim minorities. The revelations were contained in an expansive data project by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, or ASPE, which used satellite imagery and on-the-ground reporting to map the extensive and continuing construction of detention camps and destruction of cultural and religious sites in the northwestern region of China. It found around two-thirds of the area's mosques were affected, and about 50% of protected cultural sites had been damaged or destroyed, including the total destruction of uh, Ordam Mazar, which is a shrine, an ancient site of pilgrimage dating back to the 10th century. So wait, wait, wait. okay, let me show you guys. Let me show you guys this one. So this one, like, if you see, this is 2017 image. Do you notice? Do you notice here? Do you guys see it? Hold on, let me zoom in. Kowalski. All right. See this? This is 2017. You see a mosque here, right? So, and there's a lot of there's a lot of reports like this. This is just an example, right? So, the mosque in 2018. Look at the mosque. You see the mosque? Ah, uh, it's not there. Like it was here. It's not there. 2018 has disappeared, and it's now nothing here, right? So, and then we go to this other thing that Susanna mentioned. This is the Ordam Mazar. Uh, what is this Ordam Mazar thing? It is um, a pilgrimage site, right? Like ancient a site of pilgrimage dating back to the 10th century. 10th century. So this is like real historical stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then 2013, this is the satellite image. And then you go to 2019. Oh no, it's all wiped out. It was here. And why? Why would this be wiped out? This is historical stuff. Because they're erasing identity. Right. It's not only actual genocide, it is also cultural genocide. Right. Like what they've been doing the to the Tibetans for decades. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, the evidence for all of this is undeniable. Like, it's undeniable. The, the, and again, this is just, these are just a few examples. There's like a, there's a lot of satellite imagery that goes into, uh, there's a lot of reports. There's underground reports, independent underground reports from, uh, in, you know, from independent sources that they match and all satellite imagery and a lot of other things. But yeah, yeah so on. for those of you who don't know why we're talking about this is because this fits into the larger picture of the cultural and actual literal genocide against the Uyghur Muslims. Um, it's not exclusive to them being Muslim. They're also just being uh, targeted on the basis of their ethnicity as Uyghurs, their identity as Uyghurs, and also those who are Kazakhs. Um, so, and there's also been um, demographic engineering to bring more ethnically Han Chinese people into the region, as well as a um, extremely well documented government effort to sterilize and completely decimate the birth rates of um, Uyghurs and Cossacks in the region. Um, so this fits into the larger picture of their campaign against these um, groups of eth uh, ethnic groups. So AJ is saying Australian reporters had to be given diplomatic immunity to get out of China for reporting things like this. Wow, I read that them. article. It was crazy. They were coming after this reporter's daughter. Wow, that's crazy. Um, Ethan is saying China does not play around. You have to give them credit for that and that magnific magnificent wall built over there way back in the day. Well, Ethan, that's actually a very good analogy because just like that wall failed to protect them against the Mongols um, and all the efforts for building the wall uh, ended up being, ended up not stopping uh, the Mongols from their full, full destruction and then, uh, uh, you know, by, by their hordes. 
um, all this, you know, you're giving them credit to this, but they're doing the exact opposite of what they're supposed to do when it comes to fighting certain ideologies uh, that they don't like. This is exactly like the Chinese wall. A lot of a lot of work that it will eventually fail. Why do you want to give credit to Ethan? Ethan is Ethan. He keeps pretending like he's like on the side of Ethan. Uh, aren't you on the side of human rights and free speech and all of that? Like you want to give credit to authoritarian regimes for going and violating all those values? Like, come on, come on now, giving credit for what? But go on, Susan. Do you want? Oh, Rivka, do you want to add I, anything? Yeah, Rivka. I was just gonna say that um, that this, like, I know that they've been asked about this, you know, occasionally. Or it's been brought up, and they're, you know, the Chinese governments have been saying, well, that it, they believe that's a good policy, or people say it's it's to end what they consider like backward thinking by these people. Like that's sort of the the thought process is that they're not forward thinking, they're not with the program, so to speak, on message, and um, this is why they're transforming them, which is the exact similar thing as you mentioned about with Tibet since the fifties even, and they just recently destroyed a lot of things in Tibet and took a lot of people prisoners as well. So they're sort of on this, you know, campaign to, you know, homogenize, so to speak, or, and cleanse everybody. So Ethan is saying, um, I don't, I don't get why they don't just deport people instead of doing crazy stuff. Ethan, deporting them is crazy stuff. China is their country. What They're are you talking about? It's to the region. <laughs> That's their land. That's their home. Deport them where? Millions of people deport them where? Like, oh, why didn't they deport all of these people from their homeland instead of doing crazy stuff? That is insane that what you're just what your solution is the very definition of crazy stuff well fact, also Ethan, like Ethan, that's terrifying that suggestion is terrifying also i mean i just don't understand what is the issue with people living with people who are different or have a different language or maybe you know apparently in china there is a problem because they want a homogenous culture they want a homogenous thought process and, and and this is the important thing it's not just the same language or the same you know clothes or the same schools no it's thinking and if you notice that's how they frame it they say that they have backward thinking or they don't they have not right thinking so they want to be able to control not just what comes yeah out of people's mouths or what they wear where they go to school but they want to control this so i wanted to highlight one other thing so this technology is not only documenting the destruction of these historical sites but it is also what allowed international bodies to identify the construction of these so-called re-education camps um which i call well i don't think youtube would like the word but a, a, a C camp. Um, and so this is really important technology on multiple fronts. We can watch them try to erase identity on multiple uh, levels on both hands, trying to take away, destroy the authentic sense of self and reconstruct a false identity, which is an inherent part of thought reform in the psychology of totalism. I recommend everyone pick up this book because this is the book that is the seminal text on understanding the process of brainwashing, which contains the utter destruction. It's, it, it's the annihilation of the self. It's the annihilation of an identity. And that happens on multiple levels. And a cultural group that we come from is one of, it's a very important level. In fact, it is through this book that I learned that, um, where is it? The word brainwashing itself comes, the term comes from Chinese. Chinese. It was first used by an American journalist, Edward Hunter, as a translation of the colloquialism Xi Now, literally meaning wash brain, which he quoted from Chinese informants who described its use following the communist takeover. 
even the phrase we use to identify this process comes from this regime. Okay. And this was, this book was written in the sixties. It was documented what happening, what happened to people who are prisoners, uh, Korean and American prisoners of war in China. And it has only become more systematic. They have had decades to perfect this system of destroying identity. I wanted to say before, one thing. Before, like, you say, um, before you say that, see, can we read the Marcos comment? Marco is saying deporting okay. an it. Marco is saying deporting an ethnic group is also considered a genocide under international law. Very good point, Marco. But go on, Rivka. Um, I just want to go back to you know the famous Stephen Biko quote to end on what you were talking about. He's saying you know never doubt that the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed, right? So that's sort of what China's trying to do is they want to be inside those people's heads. And that's what this totalitarian brainwashing does. So that they're controlling what you think. Because that's the thing is like people can make you say or do things, but most of the time they can't get in here. Right? But that's what they're doing. They're trying to get in here. Uh, and they're successful sometimes. Mm -hmm. And a very important part of the process is having... Um, uh, con uh, what do they call it? Um, like basically, control over your milieu, meaning control over your actual environment. If you, they right. have control over your actual environment, then what you have in here becomes a lot harder to control. Right, but and I if it's all homogeneous too, it makes mm -hmm. it a lot easier. Um, we got a super chat from Trolls. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Um, he's always throwing so much generosity at us. Uh, so he's saying the Chinese Communist Party has morphed into a Confucian extremist and Han nationalist regime and getting more and more totalitarian under Xi Jinping. Yep. Uh, Read this one as well. Kraton is saying, is China's goal an ethnocentric one? As in just because of that or that they want an army of homogenous robots. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, um, a book by a very bad man from World War II. Say, say it in English. My dream. My, my troubles. Oh, my okay. Struggles. My struggle. Uh, versus my jihad. My jihad. That would be, <laughs> that's literally the translation. But go ahead. Um, versus 1984 is my question. Um, right. Okay, so I don't know, we don't, but we don't, yeah, that's, I don't know what to answer. But thank you for the super chat. I do want to, guys, I need to highlight the comments on Facebook and then we need to move on, okay? Mm -hmm. um, these are the two comments to top, move on to the next news, okay? So, guys, I'm actually happy a little bit, even though I disagree with these comments slightly, uh, the comments on this whole Xi Jinping thing in chi uh, China is becoming a little bit better on the atheist republic community, I think, because of the attention that it's getting more and people are, uh declaring it as horrible and more people are like yeah maybe like you know I'm, I'm glad that our atheist republic community is like not having the horrific comments top comments that it used to have so we made progress on that that's good uh i hope that we had some influence on that shift uh the the first one i'm going to read is by vivian vivian is saying philosophically it's a difficult topic really uh, on one hand i want places of religious worship to disappear and a part of me feels that it is a, it is good when there is one less. On the other hand, I don't want places of worship to be destroyed by force or religion to be banned. It's just wrong. I want religion to disappear by itself, defeated by education, science, culture, and technology. Um, so I'm okay with this comment. The only issue I have with it is the part that says this is a difficult topic, really, as if, like, you're saying, like, Mm, yeah, I know, and the rest of it seems kind of you kind of like think that this is a difficult position to have. I think this is a very easy position to have if you're on the side of human rights. Uh, yeah, religion should never be attacked by you know it should never be forced out. It should never be banned. It should, human rights violations should never be human rights uh, should never be violated. Um, so I'm okay with this. It just, I don't like the, how it's making it seem like this is a difficult position to take. It should be the easiest position that you can take, right? I don't even want places of worship to disappear. I don't want I them to disappear, but no, maybe, 
No, maybe like they could disappear as places of worship. I mean, they could still yeah. say, they could still stay as museums or other things. I like them to stay as well. I like the physical structure. I mean, not all of them, like some of them, the beautiful ones and the historic ones, right? I want them to stay, right? But as some, I'm hoping as something else eventually, right? Um, the second one is by Daniel saying, I'm an atheist. Somehow I do, I do need to state that on this page. Yeah, because we have a lot of religious people on our page as well. Uh, but this is sad. Good. See, this is an easy position for Daniel. This is sad. Worship of a god is fine. Okay, I have a problem with this comment. I mean, this comment is still much better than be comments that we had before, but I still have some issues in it. Worship of God is fine so long as they don't use that to take away others' right. These aren't just places of worship. They were communities, safe places, and a home for a second family. Okay? So again, I like this comment much more than comments that we had before because it's not endorsing China's human rights violations, but I still have an issue with it because nope, worshiping is God is not fine. Uh, it should be tolerated, but it's not fine. Believing in nonsense is wrong and it should be fought against, right? Um, wait, I'm gonna highlight Marcus' comment after I finish this, right? So, no, there is nothing fine about worshiping God. Uh, it's better not to believe in nonsense, it's believe it's better to believe in more true things than false things. Um, and so just because they're not um, taking away other people's rights, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't fight against falsehood. Okay, so I don't agree with that. And also the second part that says these aren't just places of worship, they were communities, uh, safe places, and uh, and a home for a second family. Okay, if it kind of may suggest that if there were only places for worship, then it would be fine for Chinese government to do this. I don't care that, uh, I mean, I do, I mean, I don't think it's relevant here that these places were safe places um, or places for community or second family, even if they were a place of worship and nothing but a place of worship, no government have should have a right to come force people uh, out of it or to shut them down in any way, even if they were only a place of worship. So I have some issues with this com these comments, a little bit like being nitpicky, but overall, it's much, much better than it used to be when people were endorsing China's actions. So let's look at the super chat right now. Um, Marcus saying the discussion has become too dark and serious. So Armin should just read. She sells what? Um, guys, can you help me out with this? I don't get it. No, he wants to hear. He wants you to hear. Wait, read it. You say the it's tongue, a tongue twister. twister. Alliteration tongue twister. She sells seashells by the seashore. That was yeah. That was easy. I did try doing it. Faster. I'm not going to wait. Wait, you want me to make a fool out of myself right here, live on air? I'm not going. I think to. Marco <laughs> wants. To. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I did it slowly, so there you go. Thank you, Marco. Thank you for the super chat. Thank okay? you, Marco. Yeah, we needed that. That was kind of depressing. All right, is the next news clap worthy? No. 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 Why can't I? Ah, oh, okay. News. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why. What has what's holding you back? Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like bell, <laughs> and also if you if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that. They want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think is no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button, but nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well. And share, share our videos because... You know, we do get demonetized, that's an obvious, on every one of our videos, so F that, 
but we don't care about that anymore. <laughs> but we also get deprioritize, and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritize. What does that mean? That means we're not we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right, and all that you know on the on people's homepages, and that's how channels grow. Unfortunately, we can't grow, so we need you guys to share our videos. So